So, you've decided that you want to play as Officer in Hell Let Loose, you're trying to upgrade your gameplay, try something new, or maybe you're just looking for some tips on how to better play as an Officer in Hell Let Loose. Well, today I'm going over my five top categories and things to think about when trying to play as an Officer in Hell Let Loose. Let's get into it. So if you've watched my Rifleman role guide, you'll probably already know the basic consensus of how this video is going to go. It's going to be very similar, but much different tips, obviously, because we're talking about Officer. So number one, understanding your role. So your primary objectives as an officer are going to be engaging enemies at a close to medium range, provide team leading requests or suggestions, and overly communicating, okay? And those are gonna be your main jobs as an officer. There's obviously gonna be a lot of other things that you're gonna wanna be doing, but we're gonna be focusing on those. Now, let's talk about the equipment you get as an officer. It's quite different from most of the other classes in Hell Let Loose, except for maybe the automatic rifleman is probably slightly similar, but we've got the automatic submachine gun, we've got your sidearm, we've got grenades, smoke and frag grenades, we've got bandages, and we've got the watch, which I'll explain a little bit here. We've got binoculars and a knife. So the watch, what does the watch do? The watch gives you the ability to place garrisons and outposts. Now, garrisons and outposts are really, really important. You probably already know what they are, but you might not have known who was putting them around the map. So the spotter, the squad leader or officer, and the commander are the only ones with a watch and possibly the tank leader. I don't know off the top of my head, but with the watch as those roles, you can place outposts and garrisons. Now, outposts you can place about every three minutes or 180 seconds, and it has a 20 second redeploy delay. So once somebody spawns on it, it takes another 20 seconds to redeploy someone else or another group of people on that. Now, keep in mind the outpost is only for your squad and garrisons are for the entire team. Now, garrisons, you will need supplies to place those down and it will depend on where you're trying to place it will determine how many supplies you need. So 50 supplies are needed in a friendly sector, whereas 100 supplies will be needed in an active enemy sector. Now, garrisons cannot be built in neutral sectors or locked enemy sectors. So basically what that means is once an enemy captures a point, there is about two rows or columns, depending on how you look at the map and how the map is positioned, that you may place garrisons in. Now, the locked sectors will be beyond that. Now, neutral sectors are just gray. So any neutral quadrant of the map, you will not be able to place a garrison in, and any locked red quadrant of the map, you will not be able to place garrisons in. Now, another caveat of garrisons is that you can only have eight on the map at a time. So if you have a good commander, the commander will be telling the squad leaders where to place garrisons and when, and will be destroying garrisons on command to shift for new and better placements of garrisons. Now, one quick tip I do have for garrison placement is to keep in mind that if your team is getting pushed on a point, you should hopefully have an outpost and a garrison placed behind the line of where that will be captured, that point will be captured, because when a point is captured, it deletes any and all garrisons and outposts within the new red captured area. Just a couple more tips about garrisons. If an enemy is within 50 meters of a garrison in friendly territory, the garrison marker on the map will display a red ping. So basically you'll just be notified that there is a enemy nearby. If an enemy comes within 15 meters of the garrison marker, it will, or of the garrison itself rather, it will become entirely red, indicating that the garrison is overrun and or locked. This prevents players from redeploying on the garrison. Garrisons within active enemy territory are disabled if an enemy comes within 100 meters. Now, a killed or down player will not lock a garrison. Now, one more thing about outposts. There are two major ways that they can get destroyed as well, along with the same ways that I described earlier as garrisons. If an enemy comes within 10 meters of the outpost, it will be destroyed. Or if it is within the blast radius of a satchel, AT rocket, AT gun, or tank shell, or grenade. Now, grenades, I don't believe destroy garrisons, but you can use rocket shells or tanks or manually destroy garrisons as well. But that's not really what we're focusing on here. So let's move on to to the next thing here. Something else I want to mention quick is the upgraded levels of officers. So obviously there's three levels of officer, just like the majority of roles in Hell Let Loose, and those come with different weapons and tactical equipment as well. So just keep that in mind. The longer you play as officer, the more and different weapons you'll unlock or tools. 
So lastly, in understanding your role, I want to mention the importance of giving orders and staying organized with your squad, okay? If you've seen any of my Hell Let Loose videos, you will know that I harp on communication like it is the fucking life and death of the game, because it kind of is. So if you're not communicating with other squad leaders, with your commander, with your squad mates themselves, organizing with the different roles in your squad, giving orders and suggestions, and you know, really trying to take command of your squad, it is going to fall apart really quickly, okay? You need to stay in comms, you need to adjust your volumes for your different communications so that you're not overburdening anything on one given moment and you can't understand all the garbled information all at once. So just make sure you're communicating clearly and staying organized. And that really rolls into number two because number two is coordinating with your team. So it's super important to stay organized with your team, doing teamwork things, communicating within your squad, etc. Now, the reason it's so important to coordinate with your squad is because say you have an engineer and a medic, right? And your engineer is trying to build a wall or a gate or something along those lines and he gets downed and he was three quarters of the way done building it. And now your medic is trying to revive him, but there's two enemy squad mates approaching that area. Obviously, you're going to want to coordinate with that. And this is a very intense and specific situation, but I think you get my drift. You're going to want to communicate with your squad and make sure that you can reinforce your squad to get things done, achieve the those tactical objectives, not necessarily the actual main objective. Now, again, I'm going to harp on voice chat because using VoIP, the officer or leader chat and your squad chat, there are three different voice chats going on all at once and you're going to want to stay organized. OK, understanding who's in what squad and communicating. If you know that there's another squad leader that has a anti tank squad set up that, you know, there's a tank fucking up your squad. Communicate to that squad leader. Hey, there's a tank here. Keep eyes on it. You know, just communicate, 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 request comms from your teammates, too. If you die and you're dead, can't do anything or see anything. All you can do is communicate at that point. So if you died to a tank or a garrison, communicate with your squad. Hey, mark that. Keep eyes on that for me. Try not to die. Play your life and keep marking it. Don't stop marking it so that I can mark it and get another squad out here to come help us, etc., etc. Or maybe an airstrike or a bombing run. You get the gist. Lastly, map markers. Obviously, as an officer, you're going to have a lot more map markers, OK? You're going to want to make sure that you're accurately marking different things on the map, like a tank, what type of tank it is, communicating that to your commander and other squad leaders. You're going to want to be marking infantry, where they're at, garrisons, outposts, etc. Just mark everything you can. Any information you gather, if they're the ones that gave it to you, ask your squad mates how confident they are in that mark. And if they say they're very, very confident or even like generally pretty confident, Go ahead and just mark it anyway to be safe. Just communicate with other squad leaders and be like, hey, potential garrison on Lima Mark or, you know, whatever garrison mark team and squad that you're on. OK, if you've made it this far, I hope you garnered some pretty good tips so far from this video. If you have, go ahead and drop a sub down below for me so I can continue making good content like this. Rolling into number three, that's going to be adapting to the situation. Now, Hell Let Loose is a very dynamic, realistic battle game. So there's going to be different types of things that you're going to need to adapt to in the game. There's different terrain, different situations, etc., etc. So, for example, say you have two riflemen and only a couple of roles in your squad. You may need to ask your riflemen to try out a new role for the first time or, you know, something along those lines. If you're getting really heavily bombarded and you're playing defense and you have no engineer on your squad for some reason, you're going to want to be like, hey, I need somebody to play as engineer. OK, we are going to need to put up and reinforce this area. I know it might not be fun to do that right now because defense is never fun, but let's just get this done, defend our point, and then the next point will be captured soon and we can move on to the next one. Or maybe you don't like playing on a defense squad, so you just change squads completely. Another thing you may need to consider is the terrain or the different objectives. So if you're playing on a map that a objective is enclosed by buildings, not you can't go inside every building, but you may want to try and shift your team to the inside of a building near an objective to wait for more teammates to come, something along those lines. Or maybe you're going to want to post your teammates up on a slight crevice or a ditch or a trench or, you know, you get what I'm saying. There's a lot of different things that can go on in Hell Let Loose. Stay open minded, stay strategic, OK? Another big thing as a squad leader or an officer, you're going to want to be able to switch on the fly from offensive to defensive. OK, and you're going to need to be able to convince your team to do the same, which I have found to be very difficult at times because your team might not see the same thing as the commander or even that you see in a literal or a hypothetical sense. They might not believe that they need to go on defense. So and if that's the case, that's OK. You're not going to get a perfect squad every game. Just do what you can. Don't get upset. You know, it is just a game, but just try and stay friendly 
but yet firm, okay? And that might entice you to change roles in your squad as well. You might ask your squad mates to change roles if you need to drop to defense or flip the offense, etc. Rolling into number four, play to your role strengths. Now, the officer has a lot of different, quite unique strengths than any other role in Hell Let Loose. So you have rapid fire SMG, or depending on what rank you are, you know, you might have a different weapon. You excel at close range and you have insane communicative capabilities. Now use these to your advantage, okay? Now there is a utter importance of cross squad comms. Like I was talking about earlier, if you are in a dogfight, not literally because you're not in a plane with a large garrison spawn of 30 players, you're gonna wanna communicate to local squads or squad leaders that might have the roles in their squad to help support you. Obviously a machine gunner or an automatic rifleman would definitely be one of those roles. Now, if you have that role in your squad, you're gonna wanna try and communicate, hey, there's a garrison in XYZ position, try and post up here to give us covering fire so that maybe one of us can go out there and destroy it. Or if you have an anti-tankman, just have him fucking blow the thing up. Boom, done. Now, something else that's gonna be really important as an officer is you're gonna wanna really commit to those close range fights. Now, obviously, if you're fighting an automatic rifleman, it might not be the wisest decision to commit to a close range fight, but if you're fighting a rifleman or any other medium to long range player, you're gonna want to really hardcore engage them because you're gonna have the massive advantage. Now, the last thing here in the officer strengths, you know, I really want to encourage you to provide outposts frequently, but strategically, okay? You have three minutes, okay? You should be trying to place an outpost, I would say, at least every 10 minutes, if not every five minutes, okay? And obviously, again, that's gonna depend on the battle and the battlefield. If you're getting fucking pushed hard, you're gonna wanna drop back and place an outpost as soon as possible behind the point you're getting pushed on if you're playing defense. If you're playing offense, you're gonna want to try and place an outpost post not in locked enemy territory but right on the edge of that active enemy territory so that when the point is captured you can rush right into a full offensive again now as well as that you're going to want to stay strategic and tactical and move based on garnered game knowledge like talking to other squad mates and your commander and mutual requests and exchanges of different movements and strategies you're going to want to just again stay open-minded now, so far we've talked about one, understanding your role, two, coordinating with your team, three, adapting to the situation, four, playing to your role's strengths. Now, lastly, number five, continuously learn and improve. And yes, I'm gonna use this cop out for every single one of my role guides because it is very important that if you want to get better at a video game or if you want to even just get decent at a video game, you're gonna want to continuously learn and improve at that game or at anything in life. Now, some of my strategies for improving communication and strategizing as an officer are gonna be to just talk to other people. You know, when it gets close to the end of the game, whether you're gonna win or lose, I mean, if it's a close fight, don't talk about this at the end of the game if it's a really close fight, but if it's a definitive win or loss, go ahead and start communicating with your squad and other squad leaders like, hey, how did I do? Where do you think I could improve? If you don't mind giving me tips, that'd be awesome. Did you like me as a squad leader? Did you not like me as a squad leader? What did or didn't you like, etc.? And also watching tutorials or analyzing your own gameplay if you have a form of recording it, those are definitely gonna be really great ways to improve on a personal level. Now, the only specific tips that I'm gonna have is really just overly communicate. Unless somebody tells you to shut the fuck up, then you should probably stop talking, or if they ask to clear comms. But you're gonna want to overly communicate, really commit to those close range fights, strategize, and just try and openly communicate with your commander specifically, and try to strategize on that end. But also you're gonna wanna try and strategize with your roles within your squad. Pay attention to what roles are in your squad and try to think about how you could best utilize those roles as well. You don't need to fully understand every role in Hell Let Loose in order to play as officer. Officer is my favorite role and I've only ever played as like maybe three or four different roles in Hell Let Loose. Before I played as officer, I only played as like two. But anyway, just stay wise, stay strategic, stay tactical, and stay good. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Stick around for more gaming news. Peace.